Good morning, good day, good afternoon to all the doctor colleagues around the world, in the US, everywhere. Um, my name is Dr. Gerald Morris, and I am an internal medicine physician here in the US, practicing in Tucson, Arizona. Um, it's been, it's great. The, the weather here is awesome. Today, we have a special treat for you. We have a, a Dr. Steyer out of Germany, who is going to be giving a talk on uh, dental procedures that he is performing, and also a lively discussion about different ways we, he and I think that medicine should be going. Um, before we get started, though, some housekeeping rules that I want to go through uh, and make sure everyone is aware of. For those of you who are looking to claim the CE credits for this particular Portinar, which we're having today, the link will be in the chat box um, uh, towards the end of the actual presentation. So look out for that in order to claim your CE credit. Secondly, uh, for the next 10 weeks, we will be hosting uh, mini webinars on the Doctors for Healthcare business. Now, I am also taking part of that. I am the chair of the uh, medicine arm of this particular uh, group, and I look forward to all my medical colleagues jumping on, being a part of this, as it's going to do great things for the practice of medicine, the way I see it. Um, if you look at my screen, you'll see two QR codes. The QR code beneath the crest with the two lions that one actually will take you straight to the nomination for uh, top 100 docs. So please click on that or click on that QR code, take a picture of it and go ahead and, and nominate someone that you think is, is deserving. Nominate yourself if you've done great things in, in the field of medicine. Um, the QR code underneath our Doctors Uniting logo uh, uh, to my side here, that one takes you to our booking a Portinar um, page. So if you have insights, if you want to get your voice out, please feel free to use that link. We have many different hosts from different aspects of uh, the field of medicine, and we look forward to connecting with you and taking this to the next level. Now, so to get started, what, who I have today is Dr. Steyer. Dr. Steyer has been practicing dentistry in Germany for over 30 years. He is a specialist in prosthodontics and in endodontics with a host of both research and practice experience spanning over 30 years in both the US and in Europe. As part of his work, he has served as clinical and course director at Warwick University in Coventry, England, as a member of the Faculty of Dental Surgery at the Royal College of Surgeons in Edinburgh, Scotland, as a course leader, MSc program at the University of Manchester, England, and as a visiting professor at the University of Florence School of Dental Medicine in Italy and at Tufts University School of Dental Medicine in Boston, Massachusetts, where he currently is. Dr. Steyer serves as adjunct professor at the University of Penn Dental School in the Department of Preventive and Restorative Sciences, Robert Shatner Center, University of Pennsylvania School of Dental Medicine. In the US, he was appointed scientific advisory board member for the Journal of Endodontics and he has served as editor, editor-in-chief, and reviewer of a multitude of peer-reviewed journals, including the Journal of Dental Education. He has also been a long-standing member of the American Academy of Periodontology and the American Association of Endodontics. Dr. Steyer is an internationally recognized lecturer known for his hands-on teaching style, innovative spirit, and both his breadth and depth of knowledge. He has co-developed several breakthrough technologies in caries detection, prevention, and therapy, which we'll be hearing about during this webinar. His award-winning work and numerous publications have been distinguished by authorities in the field around the globe, and he continues to make outstanding contributions in both practice and scholarship that have received widespread acclaim by clinicians and scientists across the board. One of his most recent uh, webinars was viewed over 20,000 times. So it is my great pleasure to bring on Dr. Liviu Steyer to discuss his breakthroughs and technologies and all the great things he's done today. Dr. Steyer, welcome. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening worldwide. I am delighted and pleased to have the chance to share this future hour with you. I will try not to bore you. And uh, if you have questions, please, please feel free to ask us. We are happy to share and to answer. So Dr. Steyer, so um, currently you're in Boston, correct? Yes. How is the weather in Boston? How's it, how's it there? Well, right now? it's a wonderful day. It's, uh, we are continue to celebrate the, birth, the second day of the birthday of my first grandchild, grandson. Congratulations. So, uh, 
thank you. So uh, it's a good day today. <laughs> oh, no, that's that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. I mean, grandparents are are a parent's nightmare because you guys spoil no matter what we say. So I, I've been living that. I, I've been living that dream <laughs> for a few years now. So, but that, that that's cool. That's cool. So you're in you're in Boston. So I'm in Arizona. I mean, um, it's 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 a great time to be in medicine. I think. I mean, I've I've looked at I looked at your work and I'm very very impressed. And I, I can't wait for us to dive into the discussion with you today. So I am gonna hand over the microphone and everything over to you and you will share the screen and we can get started. This thank, sounds good. Thank you very much and thank you. No worries. Um, um, so the topic of my today's lecture is um, fluorescence enhanced diagnosis. Why this video? Because many still believe that fluorescence is simply magic. No, fluorescence is no magic. And the purpose of my lecture is to demystify this thought. So um, as I said, well, I'm a dentist, a dentist, what can he add and what can he share for uh, medicine? Um, I think the most important issue which we, I have to say is dentists very often tend to think outside the box. And this is what makes this profession so interesting. For all, for all of you, for all of us dentists, well, this is a classic case where you help a patient turning from lacking dentition, um, going through steps which you all are familiar with and giving this patient at the end, the ability and chance to have a full dentition back. The question of course is not giving the patient the dentition back. The, patient, the question is treating infection in the oral cavity. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is different to the rest of the body. Here, a situation where this kind of uh, infection has been addressed with immediate implant placement and so on. Uh, this new recent published book uh, coming from our side, yes, um, not many and sadly, uh, um, our, our, our colleagues in, 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 in healthcare, in, 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 the med, in the medical field, they do not really, or it is not really taken serious. The oral infection is not really taken serious. And I have to say, you know, um, today, especially with this COVID, okay, um, if you look up the high level of the, or the high level, the high death rate, in ICUs due to VIP. If care would have given to pre-existing oral infection and existing oral infection during the in, uh, mechanical ventilation, then at least 20%, according to science, 20% of the death, uh, of the, uh, the death rates could have been reduced. So um, of course I have to make a disclaimer here because I own IP rights and um, this is on, on the right, on your right hand side, you can see where I started. I started with something which came up for dentistry and today on the left hand side, you can clearly see uh, the, te technology which, uh, the technology which has been expanded and it is used today this is the technology uh, uh, as uh, on the left hand side again as we started on the right hand side as it is used today in fluorescence guided surgery. Uh, neurosurgeons have embraced the technology it's called revealed fluorescence guided surgery uh, in combination with a photosensitizer um, in special case five aminolevulinic acid so five ALA gliolan uh, it is very useful for the identification um, of the tumor margins. And this is something very special. Um, you see here the application uh, of the technology um, in fluorescence guided surgery. And uh, yes, till today, um, 
microscope technology was used, but you clearly can see how easy it is today for uh, two surgeons to um, care about the same area and not to have to fight for the microscope access. I would like to thank my colleagues um, and um, who helped us put together this systematic review, uh, explaining and proving that out of fluorescence and fluorescence probe are really a potential diagnostic tool for oral cancer. Uh, on the other side, the, uh, with the team uh, back at UPenn, um, which I'm also grateful for, we did we did just published this paper, diagnosis of biofilm associated peri-implant disease using a fluorescence-based approach. Um, <clears throat> again, a paper proving the application of fluorescence in the uh, in in the daily practice, and maybe let us start straight with your take home message to make it as simple and as simple as possible. So um, photobiol of, okay, so where are we coming from? We are coming from a really well established science. This is what I like to prove you with all these publication with all these books. So yes, science matter science is stairways to heaven. Sometimes it can be too much, but nevertheless, we, we are in a scientific uh, speciality and we need to follow and to obey, to uh, listen to science. So um, let's go here and understand what this is about. So fluorescence enhanced diagnosis combines um, fluorescence both in diagnosis as well as in therapy. So bioluminescence serves for diagnosis and therapy. How does it serve in diagnosis? Well, initial identification of patho uh, pathogenic microbiom can be performed using fluorescence. And as I said, um, as can also help in identification of the disinfection, meaning you do not simply perform the biofilm disruption, but you also <clears throat> can identify at the end of your process if you were successful or not. How? By simply by using live dead assays, which are already available and which is a standard in uh, in vitro technology. So why not using, in, using it in vivo? How should you use bioluminescence? Very simple, in therapy. For photoactivated disinfection, again, something which has not been discovered and introduced yesterday, which is already available and scientifically proved, uh, photoactivated therapy and photobiomodulation. Sorry. So um, what, what, is, what are we using here? Okay, we are, so sorry, I have to put you down here. Yes. So we are using, uh, we are using bioluminescence in combination or based upon the presence of porphyrins. Porphyrins <clears throat> are aromatic, highly conjugated heterocycles with a core of four pyrrole rings, okay, coupled through uh, four methylene units that contain 11 conjugated double bonds leading to light absorption of the visible spectrum. Now using different wavelengths, using different photosensitizers, we can achieve different goals. So photoactivated disinfection, as I said, is an antimicrobial strategy that involves the combination of a non-toxic photosensitizer or dye and a non-harmful visible light source to disinfect. We are suggesting 405, which is a high energy uh, blue light. Of course, protection is uh, provided. Eye, eyesight protection is provided. There is no discussion about that. And then photodynamic, photodynamic therapy. What is this? Photodynamic therapy is a medical procedures, is a medical procedure that involves incubation of an exogenous, okay, applied photosensitizers followed by again application of light. And then photobiomodulation. Photobiomodulation 
is defined as the utilization of non-ionizing electromagnetic energy here, again, bioluminescent, uh, to trigger photochemical changes within cellular structures that are receptive, receptive to photons. And yes, it is not only for medicine, it is also for dentistry. And I will show you and share with you immediately how this can how this pertains also to uh, to the to dentistry. So, <clears throat> what is again photoactivated disinfection? Quite simple. It is based. It, 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 there are two pathways. I explained uh, the use of a photosensitizers. Then you have a type one pathway and type two pathway. Basically, what you are using are free radicals and single oxygen uh, um, and oxygen singlets. And of course, this is what generates the disinfection uh, in 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 the in the desired area. The photodynamic therapy again uses the same concept. Okay for a, a different purpose, okay? Um, we also elaborate uh, on the current clinical application and future perspective and direction of this non-antibiotic thera therapeutic strategy in uh, combating infection disease. And this is what it is important, ladies and gentlemen. We can, by applying and using this technology, we have the potential of reducing the use of antibiotics. Okay, good. <clears throat> there is so much science uh, to prove the ability. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, it knocks at the door. It knocks at the door and we do not listen. And this is what is really painful. Why? Because in the current pandemic, we could have and we should have used bioluminescence to combat and to help, uh, to help disinfection and um, reduce the death rate in uh, this pandemic. Um, clearly proven, scientifically proven by international research groups, and you see published 20, 2020, 20, 21, so new science. It is not mirrored in practice, and this is what, what is so painful. And as you clearly know, there is even as a, there is even again as stairways stairways to heaven goes through, uh, through science. And yes, systematic review is the highest level of evidence. Yes, there are even systematic reviews proving um, sorry proving the viability. Um, and the application. The in vitro and in vivo studies selected in this systematic review indicated that photodynamic therapy is, a, uh, is capable of photo inactivated and uh, enveloped and non enveloped DNA and RNA viruses, suggesting that photodynamic therapy potentially photo inactivate uh, the COVID virus. Did you ever hear about? Did you read about? Did, did you see it used? No. So you now understand how painful this is. And I cannot, I cannot explain the headache and the pain which I feel about this. In addition, photobiomodulation is uh, uh, is, can be also used. So you have one technology which using it, you can spread the application in so many different areas. Photobiomodulation is derived from the concept of manipulation of cells by transferring photons through light sources. Arne Schultz law. I will not bother you any further you, with this, but the science is already available. And now for my, for my profession, for the dentists among us, yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can use it even in implantology for proliferation, maturation, and differentiation uh, of osteoblasts. So regeneration is what you would like to use it for. Um, wound healing is uh, surely a big problem, uh, and we all know about it. And uh, wound healing is a primary survival mechanism that is largely <clears throat> that is largely taken for granted. Sadly, the oral cavity is a remarkable environment in which wound healing occurs 
in warm oral fluid containing millions of microorganisms. So it is quite easy here to um, get infection. And it is also a huge need to make sure that we can get easily rid of this infection without necessarily being uh, using antibiotics. Um, I do not have to explain. We all came through that. We all know what this kind of infection uh, infection in the oral cavity are. Yes, we have to differ to differentiate specific uh, specific areas and specific uh, wound healing. So healing of the palate is of course different to periodontal healing to healing at dental implant interfaces. In endodontics, dental pulp healing. Yes, it is possible. Uh, bone healing, healing of facial burns, healing of large defects. Um, and if we talk about healing and about oral cavity, I'm sure you, uh, you also read the news and you are uh, familiar with this new uh, big problem which occurs at the moment in India with, uh, with the severe uh, COVID uh, infection and with the uh, fung uh, black uh, black fungi and with the uh, uh, mucormycosis and the really this is like a Damocles sword above your head and but you can do something you can even do something very simple minimal invasive like using and applying photo uh, 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 applying fluorescence and bioluminescence. So uh, wound healing complications, um, we all know it and we, we, we are familiar with, okay, uh, uh, in, in guided bone regeneration or uh, for, for ridge augmentation, soft tissue complications after guided bone regeneration are common, 16.8% per, uh, of the cases. So it is actual and we can and we have to act immediately. Um, I don't have to tell you, um, Again, the wound healing and uh, maintenance uh, of, the, of, of implants over a long period of time. Um, uh, and clearly, um, what we have to understand, and this is recently published, okay, finally, there is no universal agreement on the treatment of peri-implantitis. Further research, but so we are doing implants for so many decades, but we do not agree on a treatment. We do not have something in our hands, which is proven, which is evidence-based. Well, yes, we have it, but we simply do not look outside the box. And this is what we have to learn to look outside the box. Simply, and stop here. This is an extracted tooth and cover with your, with your right hand, the right side of the screen and just look into, onto the left side. Yes, this is when you remove a tooth, this is what you see. But if this is only if you're using um, sunglasses. If you use fluorescence and hence teragnosis here revealed by designs for vision, then you will see a completely different picture. You will see the tooth and of course the calculus, but also the um, peripathogenic bacteria, which will fluorescence in red due to their porphyrin content. <clears throat> Um, this is uh, this is a paper on on uh, uh, on peri implant disease um, all to all all in all and what does it says it really at the end okay at the end in methods techniques and antimicrobial agents it mentions what photodynamic antimicrobial it says limited evidence why limited evidence because the way we are looking at evidence in dentistry is different to the way we are looking to uh, healthcare profession uh, so the medicine is looking into the uh, into into the, into into the application here we have to really change our mind change our customs change our attitude to this and it is not true photodynamic antimicrobial does not is not with limited evidence it is proven as i have showed you at the beginning and if you look up into the science more science and not only the dental the neuro dental science then you'll understand what i'm talking about so please use 
the red button and uh, stop it now. Thinking outside the box, as I kindly suggested, use available technologies. And it is not only about reveal, there are other technologies as well. But clearly here, this implant, if it would have been uh, controlled and monitored in in time on a regular base using fluorescence, you would have avoided this and you would have avoided um, the infection and the removal of this dental implant. So what? Start simply with what? Start simply with visual diagnosis. So um, then this is a wonderful paper. This is a wonderful paper. As you see, it is very old, published in already in published in uh, on the third uh, uh, in October in October 20, uh, 2019. And it says, what is it about? It discusses fluorescent fingerprints of oral bacteria. Okay, and what does it say? Out of fluorescent imaging can be used to fingerprint bacteria. So why are we not using it? I don't, I, I cannot understand. <clears throat> so yes, it makes me um, indeed angry. I'm sorry to, to, to say this. And I would kindly ask you to stop and to change please your attitude and use what is available in favor of your success in favor of your patient's care. So this is about fluorescence, um, uh, fluorescence, fluorescence fingerprinting of bacteria, uh, 28 out of 32 bacteria um, reacted and they showed clearly, uh, uh, they clearly showed a, a, a difference, okay? And you could have a fingerprinted. And if you look into the mouse, it is quite simple. You can look like this. Of course, you will see the calculus, okay? But presuming your hygienist is now removing this calculus, when, how does she really know when to stop, okay? Now, if you use fluorescence and a special, and the filter technology, which is incorporated in the reveal uh, glasses, then you will clearly understand when to stop and when the task has been completed. And this is basically the adequate way to treat, ladies and gentlemen. So I would like you even more to use a, a, a live dead essay to understand if the uh, infection is disrupted or not. And this can be done with live dead essays. Sadly, not even our colleagues, the physicians, they also do not use live dead essays, which they should. This will, of course, limit also the use of antibiotics and reduce the great risks uh, which are uh, occurring today with the uh, use of antibiotics. This, for example, is a, is a DK. I will not take you into cardiology, but here clearly uh, you will not re uh, remove everything. You will not remove this brownish discoloration. You will remove only the red-orange fluorescence because only that is um, infected material, and the rest is a result of pentosidines of the Mayad reaction. So, <clears throat> yes, um, I would like to discuss with you a little bit this concept of um, this concept of point of care fluorescence imaging for the detection of bacterial burden in wounds. Um, there are, as I said. There are several technologies on the market, and this is one of those, and they have managed to prove wonderful results as well. So which technology you go with, it is your choice, and there is no, the problem, the, the, the goal is the patient's safety, the patient's care, and the success of your treatment. And that's all. What technology you use, it doesn't matter. It just matters the safety, minimal invasive, and a successful approach towards your patient. And clearly here, 
287 out of 350 uh, 50, uh, wounds, okay, had bacterial loads over a certain level. And this could be identified at point of care. So no need to start first and to go and do uh, 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 and, and, and make in vitro growth and so on. You clearly can see it at the point of care. There is enough, there is enough science to prove this. So that limited evidence, as you saw, is clearly because of lack of looking outside the box. This is on the, le on the left hand side, you see it in wounds, and on the right hand side, you clearly see it in dentistry. And yes, as a dentist, I came from dentistry, but now today I am out of dentistry and all these movement is moving, uh, is clearly showing that there is a further, more, imp even bigger picture. And this bigger picture is the whole care, uh, uh, whole patient care and not only uh, looking into the mouth. Um, you can, uh, and again, um, and this, uh, and this, Dr. Morris is exactly what I what I uh, suggested at the beginning. I would, I am happy to discuss with you uh, this black, uh, this black uh, um, uh, fungi, okay, uh, mucomycosis, and you clearly can see uh, the porphyrins on the tongue, and you clearly, uh, you, you clearly can see uh, a fungi infection, fungal infection as well, candida as well. Um, so yes, this is um, this is this paper which we which we submitted for publication. Yes, this is where I came from. Um, Designs for Vision uh, uh, was a company which I knocked at their door and they listened to me. And together we developed first this technology for dentistry, and now this technology is available and used by our uh, uh, by uh, neurosurgeons in the United States in combination with five ALA with. Uh, 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 um, with 5ALA for uh, uh, glioma, uh, glioma. I allow me please to kindly invite you. There is a lot of science, there is a lot of evidence on this website and I would welcome you uh, to have a look and um, to go and, and, and see and uh, understand more about it and de demystify and take out the magic. And no, it is no magic about, yes, it looks blue, but it is no magic. It is really, uh, uh, it, it is really science and evidence and what we really, uh, uh, what already is proven. Um, biofilms in oral cavity can be visualized by fluorescence, uh, especially due to, due to the porphyrins. There is science out there that, and about porphyrins, okay, uh, uh, David Dolphin, uh, okay, look how many books he published uh, and edited on, on the topic of, uh, yes, I went through them, very, very important knowledge. Uh, and yes, uh, as you clearly can see, porf uh, by dead bacteria do not produce porphyrins. And this is, uh, 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 there are ways to use this, this science. So as a next step, please, uh, continue with vis visual controlled biofilm disruption. So point number two is the visual controlled biofilm disruption. Again, this study uh, 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 from the study which I already introduced you, um, imagine in this case, um, you can really see, okay? You can really see on the point of care, your successful disinfection and you can help this patient not lose that uh, uh, that leg or uh, uh, whatever uh, what whatever it is in involved. So, what is the next step? The next step is a photo the the use of fluorescence for disinfection. We uh, again designs for vision. I knocked at their door and they were very ve very kind of to listening to me. And we have developed this so called germinator. So the germinator for the moment, um, yes. Terminator, germinator, sorry. <laughs> sorry for that. Um, uh, at the beginning now, this, was, this is prototype A. In prototype A, we used just four or five, uh, uh, four or five nanometers. So we used it. Um, we just published, we, we just, we are in process of publishing a paper. We did a very nice research in Paso Fundo with my friend uh, and colleague, uh, Professor Mateus Souza. 
um, and um, we used uh, the germinator to uh, count and to see the oral disinfection, uh, the oral disinfection. Um, so clearly, if you use, uh, we, you need, if you use a filter, you see the blue light, uh, the, the blue light this way, because you filter off, you, you are using. Uh, um, so um, the, the, the future, okay, the future of, uh, um, um, of inflammatory, of treating inflammatory conditions, for example, in skin is fluorescent light energy. Okay, so clearly there is science to prove that you can disinfect, you can photobiomodulate, you can photoactivate. Okay, so how did we use it? The patient, uh, the patients, um, uh, we had uh, several groups. We had groups where we used um, exclusively chlorhexidine. We had groups where we used um, um, peroxide, uh, two concentrations of peroxide, 1.5 and 3.5 and 3% uh, peroxide, you know, that classically you will use 3%, but the 3% has also a cytotoxic effect. So you do not really want to use a too high percentage. So yes, we managed to use 1.5% 1 1 and we managed to have a 96%. We uh, uh, did a CFUs, so colony forming units. We counted colony forming units. So we did CFUs and we managed to have a 96% disinfection. Okay, so this is something which is, and it is simple to be used. And even using no uh, photos, uh, no photosensitizers at all, we managed to have an, a disinfection of over 60%. Uh, and again, now something very interesting, fluorescence light acts on mitochondrial physiology, improving wound healing. So you not only disinfect, okay, you have one, one weapon and with this weapon, you, you can reach so much, you, can, you, you manage such a great, great success. Um, uh, yes, you can indeed uh, uh, act on, mitochond uh, on mitochondria and improve wound healing, okay? <clears throat> and this is again a further paper, and this is nothing new. Uh, um, uh, this is this is available, and and okay. Here you can see uh, application of 400 to 1,100 nanometer to promote tissue healing. I ask, simply ask you, why is it not used? And yes, ladies and gentlemen, you reduce even post-operative pain. Yes, it so you reduce you reduce the burden on of the patient. And this is what counts. This is what, wh how, how we should see today uh, 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 dentistry and medicine. Uh, uh, again, uh, um, promoting wound healing. This is published 2015. Um, another paper, uh, uh, again, photobiomodulation uh, therapy for wound care. So you clearly see this is nothing which is, it's nothing new. Yes, there are different technologies. And yes, it is up to you to, to decide which technology you want to go for. You can use LEDs or laser. Okay, LED is much easier to use. It's more affordable. It does not need those investments and also not the, the additional uh, continuing education, which is uh, needed with laser. But if you already are uh, using laser, then use low la laser energy. So whatever you prefer to use. And these ladies and gentlemen is the difference between here we have a laser, here we have an one single LED, and here is with multiple LEDs. Uh, for the wound healing, I prefer today uh, the use and application of multiple, uh, multiple uh, uh, LEDs and also multiple, multiple waves, uh, multiple wave, uh, wavelengths. Again, uh, uh, um, advances in, in wound care, okay, wound healing society. And again, they are talking. They are talking about the same. They are talk, the, the same topic again and again. Photobiomodulation. <coughs> Sorry. Because it is clear that <coughs> um, it it. it, it it is used for, for generation of reactive oxygen species. They will react rapidly inducing potent cellular responses. 
intracellular photo absorption, let's not discuss this, uh, and then leading to a con con concerted gene expression contributing to therapeutic photobiomodulation effects on wound healing. So clearly you see there is, there is science to prove you right, and there is science to call you to action. A new terminology which has been just launched is this terminology. It's called photobiomics. And photobiomics is, uh, is looking at application uh, of photobiomodulation to influence the microbiome in humans. So again, addressing what? Addressing disinfection and addressing the, uh, the reduction of the use of antibiotics. <clears throat> um, this is what brought me to this idea, to this idea of using, uh, of building this germinator. Uh, so uh, I know that um, scientifically, um, uh, the peroxide is a quite um, stable solution, uh, but uh, in certain conditions, but photocatalytic disintegration of um, of peroxide, so meaning you give a push to the peroxide to start generating the free hydrogen uh, uh, radical and the hydroxyl, then you will have this uh, fast and excellent uh, disinfection, disinfection protocol. And this is, um, if you use, uh, if you look at it, how, how, how it generates, how it makes it active, yes? So uh, um, if you give blue light on the, photo, uh, on, the, on the peroxide, you see how it generates, it's kind of a boiling process. Yeah, so this is uh, what it what it is about. Um, so even in cardiology, okay, in cardiology, treatment of bacteria with uh, uh, with hydroxyl with hydroxyl radical would result in a reduction of viable counts of ninety nine point nine percent. What does this mean? This clearly means drill and fill. Forget it. Okay, and. This is a different, a different world. It's a completely, you understand, it's a different world What I would like, I'm kindly inviting you to join and, and, and it is a new world, okay? So again, the germinator in action, yes. Uh, um, so clearly uh, 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 further studies and not my studies, okay, uh, proving the bactericidal effect of hydroxyl radical generated by photolysis of hydrogen peroxide. Um, and of, of course, the process of disinfection is depending on what is depending on the generated hydroxyl radical. So, um, concentration, a, a further paper. So basically these are all papers supporting, and it's not new, this paper, okay? Uh, this, is, this is science from 2015 and 2010 and so on. So uh, you just have to look outside the box and uh, to not have a narrow, no, not be narrow-minded, but open-minded because you are dealing, even you are in the mouse, you are dealing with the whole body. You are dealing with a patient. And same for the other for the other specialities in medicine. You are not dealing only with an organ. You are dealing with a whole body. We are dealing with a human being. Um, a, a further paper, a, a, another 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 pro process here was efficacy and safety of a therapeutic apparatus. Again, for the same purpose, uh, um, more sophisticated, but you can use it. It's the very same. And I would just want. To, to prove you that there is science in the background, okay? It is not, it is not that it is limited evidence. It was, it is nonsense to call it limited evidence, okay? The germinator is your stairways to the sky. Again, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I, we used, yes, we used uh, uh, 3%, but we diluted the simply 3% to 1.5, and this is the way we are using it. And it's a very simple application, as you clearly can see. The patient, it's not painful for the patient, it's not boring, it's just a very short application and you are done. So, um, yes, you can generate satisfaction. Yes, you can, it is in your hands. So bioluminescent enhanced oral, uh, oral care is not 
is not, you can use different photosensitizers. There is so much and so much to come and you will be surprised, but simply be open and allow, allow the new information to reach you and to use it. So thank you very much. I believe I, I did not bore you. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, this group. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Morris. I would like to, uh, to thank Dr. Dr. Shah and uh, uh, the Academy for having given me this opportunity to share this knowledge and this information with you. Thank you very much. And this is my email, ladies and uh, gentlemen, if uh, you, want to ask any uh, to ask questions to raise points or something please feel free to contact me i am happy to share information my information with you thank you very much awesome presentation dr steyer i it, uh, as a primary care doc i mean you it's opened my eyes to a whole nother uh, way of thinking and looking at treating you know more common disorders that we see in primary care. So as an internist, you know, I, we see, I have a large population of diabetic patients who have diabetes, sorry. And the diabetic wound is a big one. And it's one that it's difficult at times to get patients in to wound care, because even those facilities are stretched thin, especially, you know, Absolutely. with the way things are going and with the, with, the, with, with, with the current situation we're in, where appointments are not always available, or if they are available, they're two to three months out. So, I, I mean, looking at what you, what you proposed me, here. Mm. Allow me to interrupt you. I don't yes. know, mm. you know um, a patient with a high glycemic index. Yes. Okay. Skin will fluoresce. Hmm. Okay. So you can use it also to identify. You don't have to... Uh, 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 um, you simply, you simply will see it on the skin, okay? And all these diabetic open, uh, 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 diabetic infections and all these. This is the way to go for disinfection. Ident visual diagnosis and point of care disinfection and point of care identification of disinfection. So, so with, that, with that being said, since we're talking about, you know, the, the, the disease of diabetes here, so if you were to uh, use the, the, the photodynamic therapy for, let's say, a diabetic wound, how would that, uh, and the person obviously has a high glycemic index there, or a high glycemic load because their blood sugar is high because of their condition, would you see that impacting the actual ability of being able to diagnose or identify and, and treat the bacteria that's located in that wound? Yes. Uh, there are, as I said, there are a, a couple of technologies which allow yes. uh, a bacterial fingerprinting at point of care. Mm -hmm. This, so we have this information. Yes. Now we can use uh, either simple or a combination of point of care disinfection approaches mm -hmm. from. Uh, uh, even the application of hypochlorous acid, okay? You could use, uh, it is FDA approved and it is proven to be a highly effective uh, or with the highest efficacy in disinfection. So all these, uh, when you go everywhere with this alcohol, alcohol for hand disinfection, no, this is not the way to go. We are really limiting our 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 view. Um, yes, you could you you, sh you could you should use uh, 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 different approaches, and in 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 a row, and you can generate disinfection at point of care. You visual identify the successful disinfection. Well. I do not have to tell you more. You can use hydrogel for, for hydrogels and all these kind of new bio, biomaterials uh, 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 for wound closure and you help your patients. Wow, good, good stuff, good stuff. So with regards to the treatments, now I notice you know you have the germinator. So how, how long of a time would the patient have the, the apparatus on and is it multiple treatments to achieve the goal? Just run me through a timeline. Um, 
we used uh, uh, a very long uh, treatment time between 1.5 to three minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing. It's zero. That's yeah. an eternity, right? Yes, it's zero. Okay. And um, again, I would prefer, I, uh, I'm working now on this point of care identification of the disinfection, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. using the life dead assay. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Life dead assay means uh, you use a photosensitizer, okay, to identify if you manage to get rid of all viable bacteria. Okay, like in vitro, when you do fluorescent spectroscopy, this is the mm -hmm. very same. This is the way you, you, you prove a technology to be active as a disinfectant or not. So I went from taking from the lab into the, into the point of care. That's all. It's simple. Hmm. That's, okay? that's revolutionary. Sounds, that's, I, mean, I, 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 I mean, I know we use PDT therapy in dermatology. Um, yes, uh, and and you know I've, I've I've seen it being used, but I mean having the application available for point of care primary care, or um, it, I think that that's gonna be that's gonna be huge for people who are like me who are internists who are or, or family practice doctors in the office. I mean because it's 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 gonna help reduce um, uh, patient burden on the system because then if we can stop it here, or if we can stop it at this point before it gets to getting to the point where now we need surgery and debridement uh, all, i mean I, I think we're going to help save limbs and lives uh, down the line and I, I i love when you mentioned the um the fact that we can alter the the, the microbiome as you and i both know uh, you know the mouth is the is the entryway to a whole host of diseases and 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 i do believe that we don't pay enough attention as in my field to what's going on in the mouth you know, because I mean, and you have, cardiologist. Mm. you have your loops on. Okay. Okay. As a generalist, as a, as a generalist, okay. Or as an internist, you have your loops on. Okay. In addition, you just have a completely different view, a different understanding, a different mm -hmm. diagnosis opportunity to see your patient. Mm -hmm. That's all. Oh, That's what cool. about what about you um, look into the you look into the throat? Yes, you look into the ears, you look into the throat, you look into the nose. You have the ladies, sorry, uh, sorry, ladies, but the problem of vaginitis, you can mm -hmm. diagnose this on the spot. What uh, and 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 since we're talking about what about an uh, urological health, like uh, urinary tract infections or those things. Uh, uh, would uh, would you be able to? Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing you would be able to use that same kind of uh, um, therapy or device to be able to diagnose urinary tract infections more, more, um, more. Um, what's the word? Uh, quicker and easier without waiting for a culture to take like three days to grow, uh, and then you can have your therapy be a little bit more targeted. Do it's you very see use the science available science, put it together one and one, and it is, it uh, it gives you the answer. That is that is awesome. That is awesome. I have learned a ton. <laughs> I, I, it, it's truly been my pleasure. I mean, and I, I was happy to host because I mean, when I found out what you were what you were about, it was it was definitely eye opening to me because I I don't use obviously this particular technology in my in my practice, but it was it was something I was looking to kind of kind of get a feel for and see exactly you know how it could apply. And I'm I'm with you. I mean, I would love to see. You know, medicine take off into the 21st century uh, and and move away from some of the things that we do because antibiotic resistance is becoming a huge, huge problem. And 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 as a primary care physician, you know, I mean, we 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 tend to get uh, the 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 short end of the stick because you know everyone says, oh, you guys prescribe way too much antibiotics. And I mean, uh, and to be honest, we sometimes have no choice because there's nothing we have nothing else available. To help to be targeted, to help to be you know you know with, with surgical precision to get to where we need to get, especially with wounds. I mean, I see wounds all the time, and what I have to do is culture and wait, and and during that oh. waiting time, we're giving the bacteria time to kind of set up shop. So by the time I get an answer, it's now three oh. days, two to three days back, and then it's gotten worse. So guess what? Oh, you need IV antibiotics now because I couldn't get you know. But 
but I think I think with with everything that I've, I've listened to today, I think if we can band together and kind of you know team up, whether it be dentistry and medicine, to kind of come together and find something to 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 make uh, um, um, the practice of medicine and dentistry a lot easier and have that that collaboration, I think we're going to see huge changes in 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 the way we practice and and and, and get patients on the path to better health. So I mean, it's it's truly been a pleasure. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with you this past this past hour about all this stuff. Um, any closing remarks you want to give uh, so we can give the audience before I you know say a couple, something else afterwards? Um, I have a colleague of mine, uh, Ed Musk, and um, Dr. John Comisi, and he said very nicely, test drive it. Give a call, give the company a call, let the sales rep come into your practice and test drive it. That's all. That's good. And I, I, I think that's a good, that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea to see. Good. So Thank you. those good. of you, those of you joining us on uh, Facebook, uh, I want to let you guys know. So to, to, to earn your CE credits, obviously, there should be a link in the chat. So that way you can click on it and get the credit. Um, the Doctors for Healthcare Business is also starting, I want to remind you guys, our 10-week put in our series starting next week. Join in, go to our Global Summits um, Institute page, you know, like, follow, you know, look out for the things that we're doing. Because, I mean, more and more talks like this are important in, in the fields of dentistry and medicine. And we also want everyone to go to top100docs.com, uh, doc.com, sorry. Uh, and and um, I'm going to have them put that particular address or, or link to the website in the actual chat box on the Facebook page because we want to get more engagement. We want people, we want more and more of us as physicians, dentists, optometrists, chiropractors, you know, PhDs, you know, all of us, you know, pharmacy to be able to kind of come together and talk and discuss and, 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 and build these ideas that's going to help ultimately the patient. Why are we here? We're here to help the patient to be able to make it make medicine more accessible uh, to those who need it. And honestly, uh, and, and I think if, if we are able to achieve that, everyone's going to have a better quality of life, including those of us who are in the professional realm. So remember, top100doc.com, go there, check it out. And as and just one, one thing else, you look at my uh, of, uh, on my shoulders, the two QR codes, utilize those, click them, for them to your other physician colleagues. I'm calling on my medicine friends and medicine colleagues out there to jump on the bandwagon. I think, I think we as a group have been a little too silent. We need to open up our voices. And we also need to, like Dr. Steyer has said, think outside the box. That is key for us making breakthroughs in medicine. Everyone who's done something great in the field of medicine has gone against the grain. I think we've gone along with the grain for too long and we need to now open our eyes and, and, and get out of the matrix and be able to do great by our patients. Thank you so much, Dr. Steyer. It's been a true honor and pleasure to meet and have this conversation with you. I do hope that you and I can actually do stuff you know, on the side. Obviously, I will be emailing you because I am very interested in what you have to, uh, in, in what you spoke about today and seeing the applications of primary care, which is what I am. Um, I look forward to us connecting again very soon. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great weekend. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye. Thank you.